Good morning, True Crime friends. How y'all doing? Look, today is day 30 in the state of Atahanawawa versus Chad Daybell. The state has rested their case. But look, 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 look. First, they were in their rebuttal case. Oh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so look, they started the day with motions in limine. Motions in limine is when they go before the judge and they're like, excuse me, judge, um, it's a lady we want to bring back to talk to y'all and stuff. But first, we should probably discuss it because what she might say, mm, you might not let her say it. So I was like, mm, okay, who was trying to come back? Turns out, Miss Janice Olson. This is, I've noticed a theme in this case, right? They have somebody come to the witness, the per, to the stand, the person testifies, and then the judge is like, okay, you're free. You can go about your business. And by go about your business, these people here, um, go listen to the trial so you can see what else is going on. Listen, I'm nosy too. I would be like, I couldn't punch it up fast enough on my phone if it was me. So Janice was like, okay, I'm done testifying. Let me just sit and listen to what they have to say. Here's the thing. She watched the rest of the testimony and she saw Emma's testimony and she was like, well, this girl is a lying ass liar. And I was like, oh my God. Turns out, um, as we suspected, everybody hates Emma. Not hates. Hate is a very strong word and you should not be out here hating people. Um, everybody thinks Emma's a liar. Um, which I mean, whatever. Is that better than hate? Worse than hate child? Unclear. Anyway, so the motion in limine was to discuss if Janice Olson, if Janice Olson could come back and clarify a few points. Here's the points that she wanted to clarify. First of all, Janice says, I was there and it was a whole bunch of other teachers around when Tammy said, um, oh, my husband wants me to up the life insurance. So Tammy didn't just do that on her own. Tammy was out here telling folks, mm -hmm, girl, yeah, we all sitting here at the lunch table together. We filling out our paperwork together, whatever. But Chad, my no good husband, he has asked me to up my life insurance before I retire. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And so then she watched um, Emma's testimony and she was like, it went down like Emma said it went down, but Emma left out some facts and some details, and I would like to come and clarify those facts and details. And the judge was like, let me think about it now. Because um, you keep people keep wanting to come back and be like, mm -mm, I saw what she said, and let me tell you what actually happened. Um, everybody over there in Idaho, Iowa, please calm down. Please, don't you worry about it. Chad is going to be convicted. We all think he's a scumbag. You can see he's a scumbag. We can see he's a scumbag. He's clearly an official scumbag court of public opinion now in a court of law he's presumed innocent until like tomorrow or something anyway so the judge was like okay okay i hear what you're saying jenna's girl you can't testify i mean he didn't say that to her face he said it in judicial language or whatever but officially jenna's can't testify and so um lindsey blake the prosecutor was like mm, don't worry about it. i got a couple more rebuttal witnesses to come up here we just gonna keep slam dunking mr Pryor and chad david love this so don't you worry about it. she was like i call back to the stand dr eric christensen Dr. Eric Christensen. Dr. Eric Christensen was the medical examiner who did um, Tammy's autopsy after she was exhumed. And so I was like, well, we already heard what he had to say. But here's the thing. The prosecution had their own, I mean, the, the defense had their own medical examiner. And their medical examiner was like, I looked at all of the information and it's unclear how Tammy died. So I don't know how they could say she was suffocated. And Dr. Christensen, Dr. Christensen was real calm, real cool. He was just like, okay, my patients can't talk. Yes, sir. We assume that since they're all dead, but um, thanks for the reminder. And he was just like, we routinely review a zillion billion records. That is just what we do. And um, that Dr. Raven, that heifer that the defense brought, she only reviewed a few records. Oh, the shade. I was living for it. So Emma Daybell was like, I my mother might have died of high blood pressure or drinking colloidal silver or from sleep apnea because I have sleep apnea. Emma girl, sit down. Dr. Eric Christensen, who's a doctor? You may have noticed because I call him doctor. He was just like, um, yeah, it wasn't none of those. And so I was like, hmm. so John Pryor got up and he was like, Dr. Christensen, yes, I know you reviewed a ton more records than my witness did, but did you talk to the children? Dr. Christensen was like, oh, I wonder what time the deli closes. No, I didn't talk to the kids. He was real calm. And I was like, Dr. Christensen, don't you want to like buck up your case a little bit? But he was not worried about it at all because apparently he knows how court works. He was just like, mm -mm, I didn't talk to Chad's kids. Did you talk to the family? No. And he's like, so Pryor was like, so you only talked to the, you only looked at the records from the police. And I was like, okay, uh, fine. And so 
Dr. Christensen was like, mm-hmm, that's all I looked at because that's all I had. So Pryor was like, I rest. I mean, he didn't say that, but then he went and sat down, like, flopped in his chair, like, I have made an excellent point. Everybody hates the police. Sir, that's not true. But he was just like, okay, they only looked at police records. Lindsay Blake got up, the prosecutor. She was like, uh, Your Honor, I would like to recross because clearly Pryor's an idiot and I got some things to say. And the judge was like, okay, go on, girl, because I want to hear what you got to say, too. And uh, Lindsay Blake was like, uh, Dr. Christensen, did the kids talk to law enforcement at all? And he was like, mm -mm, child, I was wondering what you was going to ask. I assumed that you were going to ask, but no, they did not. And so I would have been able to get their word for it, but they didn't want to talk to the cops. So what you want from me? And um, she was like, hmm. Okay, Pryor, thanks so much, Doc. I'm going to see you later. Bye. I'm going to get you a sandwich down at the deli. You just haven't put it on my tab. And so then he left. And I was like, okay, who else do they have in rebuttal? And um, so they called Detective Ray Stubbs. And I was like, who is Detective Ray Stubbs? Do I know a Ray Stubbs? That name does not ring a bell. So Detective Stubbs came in and he was like, hi, um, I'm the phone dude. And I was like, okay, phone dude, what you got to say? And he was like, I reviewed the, the data from Google and from all the internet from Chad Maurice Daybell. Now listen, I know that Chad's given name is Chad Guy Daybell. I do not like that name. I think it is boring. I personally, myself, have renamed him Chad Maurice Daybell. And when I make my notes, because yes, I make notes when I'm watching trial, his initials are CMD. So when my notes say CMD, child, that means Chad Maurice Daybell. So anyway, they review the Google records of Chad Maurice Daybell. And his Google says, how do you turn off location services? Sarah, I'm Chad. I appreciate the acumen of your Google ability, but... um. You should maybe Google that on dark mode, sir, or on somebody else's computer. I'm just, I'm not trying to help the unalivers, but I'm just, I'm just saying. And so, um, John Pryor got up there and he was like, right, 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 right. But listen, at the time he Googled this, wasn't he Uchi and Lori's coochie? So maybe the reason that he Googled that was because he was having a salacious affair behind his Mormon wife's back, not because he was trying to unfortunately unalive anybody. And so uh, Detective Stubbs was like, right, 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 right. That is an excellent point. If you are sneaking around, motorboating some lady you're not supposed to even be talking to, um, yes, you might want to turn off your location services. And I was like, dang, okay, he makes a good point. That's fine. Lindsay Blake pops back up. Hi, I'm back. I have another point to make. Um, also, might you want to turn off location services if you're committing a crime? I was like, ooh, the sh I was living for it. And uh, Detective Stubbs was like, mm -hmm, girl, I was wondering if you was going to ask me because, you know, criminals be doing this all the time. And she was like, okay, point made, point in my column. Thanks so much. And so she let him go. And I was like, we are plowing through these rebuttal witnesses. Okay, this is going to go quick. So then she was like, I would like to recall Detective Ray Hermosillo. I was like, okay, is this not Detective Ray Hermosillo's Third time on the stand, the prosecution called him, the defense called him. Now he's back in the rebuttal case. Has he been watching trial testimony too? Is he going to get disqualified? But he was the lead detective on the case. P.S. Chad rated him dark. And if Chad had not um, got arrested, he pro Ray probably would no longer be on this mortal coil. But I was like, what are we going to talk to Ray about? Because we heard Ray. We listened to Ray. We believe Ray. And so... um. But Emma and uh, Emma Murray and her husband, Joe, they threw a whole bunch of shade at Detective Hermosillo. And I was like, okay, Lindsay Blake, girl, how you going to clean this up? Not that you need to, because we really, really believe what that what, um, the detective said. And now with them, them, Emma Murray and her husband, Joe Murray, we don't believe what they said. So anyway, she was just like, um, hey, Ray, how you doing? I know, listen, I know you, you tired of being here. But we just gonna wrap this up. You my last witness. Um, one more thing. One quick, quick, quick thing. Let me let me ask you a couple questions. Listen. Um, have you ever seen Emma before? He was like, mm -hmm, I saw that hoe. I mean, he he was like, mm -hmm, yes, yes, I've seen her. They said, did you see her at the gym? He was like, yeah. I mean, it's Rexburg. It's a small town. It's only but so many gyms. But yeah, I saw her at the gym. He's like, do you recall when you saw her? Yeah, I saw her before the kids were found. So wait. If you see the daughter of a suspect at the gym, don't you just go and work out in her area and try and overhear something? It was before the kids were found, not after the kids were found. Also, Emma Daybell, 
unreliable narrator. But we knew that from when she was talking. So, okay, he was like, mm, I saw her at the gym. I think I saw her one time. I was not working out near her. I didn't want to stand near her. I didn't want the murder vibes all over me. And so, uh, Lindsay Blake was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. Also, did you drive by the property? Because Emma and Joe said you kept driving by the property and kept driving by the property. He was like, yeah, I drove past that property for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was a crime scene. And I was like, right. So apparently he drove by before the kids were found looking around to see if he could see something. He was like, I spy with my little eye. Murderers. Anyway, so um, he was looking around trying to see if he could see anything and he didn't see nothing. But then after um, the bodies were unfortunately unalive, yes, he was driving by that area. You know why? He has a dry cleaner in that area. I was like, oh, Ray Horacio has a side hustle. It's a dry cleaner. Is it a family dry cleaner? Is it your personal dry cleaner? Your mama, your daddy, you and your wife own a dry cleaner? Is it called Ray's Fluff and Dry? I need to know everything. Ray, now listen, what I want to say to you, uh, Detective Hermosillo, with all due respect, you missed a very good branding opportunity. And now the fact that you mentioned the fact that you have a dry cleaner, um, I think that is excellent because you know everybody all afternoon was like, where is Ray Hermosillo's dry cleaner? I hope it's called Hermosillo Dry Cleaning and not something cutesy like the fluff and fold or whatever. He should have been like, I, my family has a dry cleaner in that area. And if you use the code MURDER, you can get 10% off your next dry cleaning order. We do fluff and fold. We do same thing. We do some nice alterations. We oppress everything out for you real nice anyway and i was just like right right right, right. but he ain't do all that that's just what he should have done in my mind so anyway i was like okay um now what is chad uh, what is chad's lawyer gonna say mr Pryor? what you gotta say and mr Pryor was like no questions i was like sir Mr. Pryor is tired. I understand. He owns a farm out here with some, some dead body juice still on it. He's got to figure out how to evict Joe and Emma by the end of the week. I'm just saying. And then the state rested. I was like, that's it? That's all? What happens next? How long till we can stone him? I mean, I mean, how 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 long till deliberations? And so I was just like, okay. Um, so now they spent the rest of the day going over like the destructions, the directions, the, you know what I mean, what they're going to tell the jury. Cause they have to sit down and hash out like what exactly is going to be in the jury instructions. Can you call him names when you stand up and announce the verdict or whatever? So they went over all of that. And then on day 31 of the trial, closing arguments, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm closing arguments are going to happen and I can hardly wait. You know, I love closing arguments. You know, I love a verdict. Oh, I don't know how long it's going to take. So they're going to, um, today in trial, uh, they're going to do instructions to the jury, closing arguments, and then the deliberations begin. Now, this is what you need to know about deliberations. So they're going to deliberate I think it's going to take like a day to a day and a half. I don't think they'll have a verdict right away because this is an eight week trial. So I think they'll fi finish like the rest of the day. Then they'll get a good night's sleep. Hopefully because it's a good night's sleep. Child, they are sequestered. Now, here's the thing. I would be willing to be on a jury. I don't know that I would be on an eight week jury, but I would be willing to be on a jury. But then you got to stay in a hotel. What kind of hotel? Do you get to choose? I mean, oh, oh, please, Black Jesus, don't put them in nothing trashy. Because, you know, they need a good night's sleep. You don't want them to get no bed bugs or nothing like that. So they're going to be sequestered in a hotel. And then they come back the next day. Do they get the free breakfast buffet? Is it one of them hotels? Do they get to drive through at the McDonald's? Because everybody in this town seems to eat McDonald's, although it's terrible for your health. But anyway, oh, hang on, hang on. A little amphibians coming back to live in my throat. Oh, my goodness. <coughs> oh, oh, you know, I got to gossip freely. I need a cup of little coffee. Hang on, hang on. So, anyway, they're going to um so be sequestered during deliberations. And if deliberations run into Saturday, oh, they will be there on Saturday. What if they come back with a verdict on Saturday? Do you think I will have my phone set? Oh, yes, I will have my phone set. And then they will announce the verdict. Boom, boom, boom. And then all of us will be very excited. I know I myself will be very excited. And then everybody will go home for a good night's sleep. And then the penalty phase begins, which is like a little mini trial. And they have um, all the victims come up and get victim impact statements. And Garth and Emma and maybe some of them other kids will come up and plead for their daddy's life. And then the jury gets to go back again and figure out, does he get the unalive penalty or does he do life in prison? Now, listen. 
Me personally, I am not a pro on a life penalty person, but there are some situations where I'm like, I can see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so over there in Idaho, Iowa, they had, they were using like the lethal injection, but the last time they tried to do it, they had trouble finding a vein. And I was like, oh, that's unfortunate. Um, I, shouldn't it be the law that like, however you unalive the person, that's how you get unalive? That seemed fair to me. But listen, we are not criminals. We want to do things in a more humane way. Um, so if you're going to unalive somebody, you have to do it in a humane way. So they have opted for the firing squad over there because everybody got guns. I mean, honestly, they could just set up like some sandbags and whatever, put you out on a shoot range. They should probably let them run around and just take their chances, right? Everything like, you know, the ducks in the shooting gallery at the fair. Anyway, so that's not how they do it. They do it more humanely. And do they still give you a cigarette or a smoking forbidden, even when you're about to take your last breath? So over there in Idaho, Iowa, they have um, the shooting range, I mean, the, the, the firing squad penalty, but they don't have a facility to do it. How y'all decide on the firing squad, but y'all don't have a firing squad facility. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't understand how that works. And does it have to be like, do you do test shots first? What if they shoot the person in the wrong place? I have questions, but since they don't have a facility and also bullets are very dangerous, you know, it's, they got all in potatoes. Why don't they just stone you with potatoes? I think that would be appropriate. It's still the unalive penalty. It would hurt. You might be, it's, might it be mildly torturous? Yes, but he's an unaliver and a terrible human being. So it remains to be seen, number one, if Chad gets convicted, he's going to be convicted. Number two, if he gets life in prison or the unalive penalty, I think he's going to get the unalive penalty. How much will Emma cry? Will she dye her hair back? Will she feel like her daddy is on the other side of glory? He's clearly not going to the endless heaven buffet where her mama is. How long till Lori joins him? Um, I just, I had so many questions, but I'm getting ahead of myself. For today, it's just jury instructions, closing arguments the beginning of deliberations i can hardly wait also i know some of y'all are like well wait 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 now that this case is over what are we gonna do next oh friends there is another case out here in these true crime streets that i am watching it is scandalous there is unaliving there's affairs there's ba outside babies child this case has everything there's a man who was spying on somebody and, and he didn't even have the common decency to get in a bush and spy i have manners i keep my pinkies out if i'm gonna spy on somebody i at least get in a bush and do it he just was trespassing on somebody's probably like shh don't tell nobody i'm just spying on this person over here sarah there is spy etiquette if you're gonna be nosy you need to be nosy with some kind of ethics get in a bush that is just a pro tip for me to you but look I will be back here tomorrow when we're going to talk about um, the closing arguments. Oh, you know, I'm living for it. Okay, I will see you then. Bye.